time yeah. Making a difference One cup at a time So be sure to grab your tea Grab a seat And tune in to Miss Liz Tea time Making a difference One cup at a time Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right. I am back and it is evening tea. And tonight I am joined in the studio with the incredible DC Gomez. That is right. DC is joining me and she will be sharing her TEA and her stories, writing styles, all of that good stuff. So grab your tea, grab your questions, grab your comments, leave them in the comment section and I will pull them up as we speak. But before we get all of that started, we're gonna do the disclaimer and a little bit of intro with her bio and then we will get DC in the studio with us. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live shows. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith, however may bring forth dialogue and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participation are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk, it is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about this disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me at Miss Liz through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in this show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect that and will see you at a future show at a later date. Now, there we go. Disclaimer is out of the way. Now, let's do this incredible bio of the guest that we have sitting with us tonight and sharing her tea. So tonight I have DC Gomez. She is an award-winning USA Today best-selling author, podcaster, motivational speaker, and coach. Born in Dominican Republic, she grew up in Salem, Massachusetts, D.C., studied film and television at New York University. After college, she joined the U.S. Army and proudly served for four years. D.C. has a master's degree in science administration from the Central Michigan University, as well as a master's in adults education from Texas A.M. A-N-M, Tex, Texarkana University. I'll get her to say that one because that's a little sneaky, a little a little tricky, not sneaky, tricky. There we go, Miss Liz's tongue. She is a certified John Maxwell team speaker and coach and a certified med meditation instructor from the Chor Chorapai Center. I'll get her to say that too. One of DC's passions is helping those around her overcome their self-limiting beliefs, and we will be speaking about that tonight. She writes both nonfiction and as well fiction books, ranging from urban fantasy to children's books. To learn more about her books and her passion, you can find her at her website, which I'll have on the screen later on in the show. So now let me get this incredible author and writer, podcaster in and have some tea. So welcome, DC. Hello, Miss Liz. How are you today? I am doing well. And yourself? I'm doing amazing. I've been looking forward to talking to you all day. So I'm really excited to get started. So yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we were in a rush. So we were almost a week ahead of time, but we're here today on the right time, right place. So DC, let's get right into it with you. How did you all start like all of this writing and all this fantasy urban stuff? So let's get into the younger DC. The younger one, I tell everyone I'm literally a storyteller by nature. It's been my passion as long as you can possibly imagine. My dad used to joke that we will make stories about anything. And they're all very, very ghostly like and kind of all sorts of imaginatives. So I've been telling stories for a while. When I went to school and for my undergrad, I was film and television. I honestly thought I was going to be making videos and I was going to be making films. So I joined the military 
and that starts to learn about people. Because when I was in school, they say, you know, you need to write and you need to create about the things that you know. And when you're 21 and you're going, what do I know about? I didn't know enough about the world and about people and what their passions to write about them. So I joined the military and I was fate had it. I was in basic training when 9-11 happened. So, oh. as we, so as we celebrate, you know, 21 years this week, you can imagine I literally was in basic training 21 years ago, which is insane to me. And it's kind of how it changed my life. So I put everything on hold. I put this creative side. I put the crap side. And then I got about five years ago into that point that I was miserable. This is where everybody goes, what happened? Nothing major happened in terms of like I was living the dream that everybody wants. You know, I had a job. I had a career. Everything was going great. And I was miserable. Like I was not living my purpose. I wasn't following my dream. I was not being creative. And I was told at the time by my spiritual director that you need to do something. What do you want to do? And everybody has a bucket list. And, you know, mine was like, I'm going to write a book. So, Lord and behold, I did not think I was going to fall in love with the writing process as much as I had. It is a different form of storytelling that I was used to, but it was absolutely mind blowing. So that kind of put the journey into let's write, let's let's continue to create, let's continue to put stuff to the world in a different medium. So when did you start writing children's books, DC? I actually started when my nephew was born. So I now have two young, amazing little boys who are full of energy and laughter. And one of the things that about four years ago, one of the things that, you know, Adam is the first child in the family, you know, first nephew, first grandbaby, everything you can imagine. And I was committed to actually write him a book that I wanted him to figure out what he was good at from the beginning. I don't want you to be 35 and trying to figure out if I have any talents. So Charlie's fables are all designed to give young ones and parents and grandparents an opportunity to have these discussions, to talk about talent. What is talent? What do you think? So Charlie, what's your talent is that fun story that my sister-in-law bless her, who's amazing, illustrated everything. So you can imagine, I told you when we were chit-chatting that my family comes along, she's kind of take prisoners. So I wrote this story and I needed an illustrator. And I was like, Kathleen, you can draw. And she went, oh God, oh God, what do you have in mind? So that's how that started. And is that collection to give little ones and parents an opportunity to really have these fun conversations and just enjoy their process? Well, and I noticed that the the graphics on the co- on the covers that's your sister that does that, right? Yes, they are amazing. Like the death the, the death intern and Judgment Day. Oh my God! Like just incredible, well, very empowering. She does all of my children's books. I actually have a brand new cover designer who's doing my urban fantasy because okay. Christine uh, Giraldi is um, amazing. She has taken over in the last year and a half. So we have transitioned the covers in different increments. So she has done all of my urban fantasy. Oh, that's really cool. Like, I mean, like the, the graphics, you have to go out and check out her books. Like DC's graphics, her books are amazing. The stories are amazing. My children even actually read them. So like, I'm just like, oh, I, I was showing them who, who's coming on tea time. And they're like, mom, I read that. I read that book. And I was like, really? <laughs> That's so, so exciting. It's, it's, it's really cool, right? When you can say, well, guess what? I'm having tea with her. <laughs> So a little bit more about the military. Mm-hmm. You you got into it at what age? I was 20. I actually enlisted at 21. I actually joined the military. I was 22. So it's strange because most of the times you think 18 year olds are joining the army. So I was a little older than most people. And I have four years does make a difference. You have a lot more life experience than most people can imagine. And you look at things a little different. You know, I was graduated from college. I was right out of college. I've had multiple jobs and I've seen things very differently than most 18 year olds who are right out of high school. So I had an opportunity to truly appreciate it from a whole different perspective. A lot of people have very mixed experiences with the military. At the time, my recruiter had the best advice and he was brand new as a recruiter. So he was very, very truthful and blunt. And he said, the army is the one job that is 50, 50 is 50% good and 50% bad. It will be what you make of it. And you get to decide. And I have taken that advice in everything I do in my life. And it's what you make of it. And that was my career. I had an absolutely amazing time. I don't know if anybody can like, really? It's like, I had a blast. I was very blessed in my career. I was very blessed in the units that I had been, the training that I was given. So I really enjoyed the Army. Well, and, and it's a good message for the, the, the viewers and listeners out there as well, right? Because you're 50-50 with anything, right? If you join a job, you, you like it or you hate it, you know, but you get a lesson or a blessing from it. 
you know, so uh, for all the listeners out there that are tuning in, please just put in your comments where you're tuning in from, because we'd love to hear where you're tuning in. If you have any questions or any comments, please put them in. If they relate to the co- to the discussion tonight, we will be putting them up. If they don't, they will not be posted. Um, I will deal with the private message that I do see in the comments here. I will get to that later on after the show. Now, a little bit more about you, DC. So how many children do you have? I honestly don't have any kids. I have. Oh, oh you nieces and nephews. I got two nephews. I have two yeah. nephews, both absolutely driving my brother insane, which is amazing. Does having a fur baby count? Like I have a cat. Does that count? Well, fur babies count. Of course they okay, count. Okay, good. I have a cat. <laughs> and if you that's honestly, what I have. I have a cat now. All my kids are adults, so I have a cat now. That's my kid. I have a cat. While a lot of cats are featured in my book, so if you see, I have the Cat Lady Special. I have the Cat Lady Series. Constantine's is a cat. I had tons of cats, so everybody assumes I, I'm the undercover cat lady, except oh. I only have one. I have one cat. Everybody's like, how many cats do you have? It's like, just one. One's enough. <laughs> He's a terror. <laughs> my mom calls my cat the terrorist, so you can imagine how much personality this cat has. I was like, yeah, nobody needs any more. So when my cat was younger, my brother's like, should we get more? It's like, no, they'll take over the house. We would be literally a minority in this house if we bring any more cats. So I have only one. Well, one is enough. I have one too, and I'm just like, that is enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So now I want to get into a little bit more about, you're also a podcaster, so I want to talk about that. So how's that going for you? It has been a really interesting and kind of bizarre journey. So two two years ago, almost three years, actually three years ago, one of my friends said, I'm like, I was looking for something creative because I can't stay still, as you can tell. Like, I'm yeah. a little ADD with OCD. So I like that's it. okay. A little wiggle, right? <laughs> all the time. And I'm Dominican, so I can't keep my hands to my, I'm like, just move all the time. So I was looking for something to do. And the discussion came back. What is it that I want to do? What I want to talk about that I can talk about for long periods of time without getting bored? So I am an avid reader, in case nobody can tell. Love books, love talking about books and creation. So I decided to start a podcast to interview authors. So we, okay. it's called Inside the Minds of Authors. Now I have a podcast. I have an Amazon Live channel as well, where we get to interview, talk to authors. And the fun thing about the podcast is, as I've been going through a lot of events, I realized you meet an author, we're talking about the books, and nobody has read the book. Nobody has a clue if they're going to like the style. So as part of the podcast, they actually get to read a portion of the book. Oh. So we all get to hear a little bit together, and then we have a discussion. So everybody can kind of experience what the flavor, what the style, if they're going to like it or not. It has been interesting because I think I've interviewed over 130 authors so far. Wow. And the la- it's been busy. Because in the last three years, so it's been a lot of fun. It's been everything from romance to finance. So there is no actual one cookie cut. It's everything you can imagine from authors who are just passionate, who just love what they do. And my job is just to kind of get their voices out there. Well, and I like that you have that part where they read a little bit about the book, right? Because I always like to do that too. I like to do a little bit of homework before Mm -hmm. I have the guest on because I want to know a little bit more about you guys as well, right? Not that you're just coming on and, oh, what's this all about? (laughs) When I first started the first year, I won't lie, it was like that. I was just like, oh, just come on, just have tea with me, you know, just let's just get it. But as the years go on, then we grow, right? And we try oh, well, this is a little bit better. We'll do it this way. If uh-huh. This doesn't work. Don't do that anymore, you know? So it, it's almost like a stepping stone, right? It's like writing, the process of writing, right? Everything gets easier with practice, especially interview and podcasting, any kind of shows you're doing. You always want to bring your guests to the best light. My goal is always to bring them to that polished level. So there's a lot of editing that goes on behind the scenes. So I feel like I'm editing a podcast and an audiobook all the time. I was like, oh. There's a lot more work than we thought we were going to do. So there's a whole bunch of behind the scenes, but it's always a lot of fun. And the editing process just kind of brings you back to realizing that was an amazing episode. You know, that was an amazing conversation. And every conversation is a little different. You get to learn so much about how people truly work on their craft and what their process is. For us, you have, you know, people who are indie, you have people who are traditionally published, you know, big press, small ones. So everything brings so much richness to the conversation, especially if somebody's trying to like, Start writing. So like this podcast is great. If you were an aspiring author, you want to hear a little bit from what people are going through, what they recommend. So what are the different styles of writing? Because I, I, in your bio, you say that you teach a lot of uh, different styles of writing and overcoming limited beliefs. So was that a problem for you when you first started writing? 
DC or? It's interesting because while I am a storyteller and I can create a lot of things, the process of writing has a whole different format. If you're looking at it, you know, how do you put a novel together? How do you come up with a story and an outline and all the things that you're putting together? When it came to seriously putting it together, it's that imposter syndrome. I think artists as a whole, whether you are a writer, a painter, whatever, we always have that in the back of our minds. Like, is it going to be good enough? Are people going to like it? Am I going to connect? Is this going to resonate? So a lot of the things that I realize when I'm working with authors specifically is that sometimes we need permission. We need somebody to tell us it's okay to put the words down. It is okay for you to start writing. You have authors that need an outline. You have people that should write out of the seats of the pen, you know, that just write their pantsers, you know, they write as quickly as they can. You have people that can do their preferred short stories versus a novel. So it is giving authors and aspiring authors permission to, just to create, to put these words together. Because at the end of the day, I truly believe the world needs their words and every single person connects with something different. So you're not gonna connect. You might not connect with myself. I write quirky action stories with very little romance. And I'm gonna take you on an adventure. We're gonna blow things up and we're gonna just have some fun. Everybody's not into that. Everybody's not into that kind of, you know, some people want, you know, the romance and they need the passion and all those different essence. So it's, a, there's an author and there's a tribe for everybody. Yeah. Well, it, it's true, right? In a different style. Like I'm, I, I kind of like the darky sense of humor, the dark sense of humor, right? Because, you know, romance is good, but sometimes we, we need other stuff, you know? The, we all the, have it. Go ahead. As we all have those flavors. And I think one of my friends, we do a TikTok live on Wednesday night. And she has the best way of describing it. She's like, I'm a mood reader. I was like, oh, my God, that is so precious. I love it. So think about it. Like, we all read depending on our mood. So, you know, some days you might want to read some romance and things. You might want to read historical. I tend to stick with certain genres that I enjoy. But we all literally have this mood and this feel. So every writer can connect with somebody. As yeah. Jamie says at all times, so Jamie Dalton is an amazing and I love her to death. But her thing is sometimes, you know, you're going to find your tribe depending if they're in the mood or the things that you write. And that takes some time and takes some work. But we're always looking for that tribe. We're always looking to connect and really bring these stories to life to people. Yeah. I really like that you said mood because I, as soon as you said mood, I was thinking the mood ring, right? What mood are you in? Okay, that's the kind of book I'm going to hand to you. <laughs> like, you know, show me the mood. <laughs> It is absolutely perfect because it fits what you do. You know, sometimes like going to the movie, sometimes you want a little bit of comedy, sometimes you want a little bit of drama. It depends what you enjoy. Some of us have things that we're not going to read regardless. I'm not much of a horror reader, even though a lot of my covers, you're like, are you sure? Because you have a lot of dark elements. A lot of my dark elements come with a lot of humor in them. So it kind of gives you a whole different flavor to it. I like the dark humor. I'm good. I, I miss Liz is a dark humor girl. Like I get it a hundred percent. A lot of people are like, Oh my God, that's really dark. Miss Liz. And I was like, ah, but it's not scary. It's just a little, you know, yes, out of the box. That's a great way to put it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and we both have one cat. So that's why we, we connect, right? Is we understand that cat connection. So, so DC, a little bit more about your, um, your books, the names of the books. So for the listeners and viewers out there that want to get and grab a copy, because you should grab a copy. It is incredible. These books are, even if you don't read them, the covers are just amazing. Like I'm telling you, but you want to read some dark humor. So grab a so book. Right now I have a full urban fantasy series. And that's probably what your daughter is reading is Death Intern. So when I first started writing this book, the first cover that I had made it look very much, almost very Twilight. So it had this feel of mystery and romance, which was really hard to sell because people were like, it doesn't have romance. I was like, it's not Twilight. I'm sorry. This is not Twilight. <laughs> so I felt like I was disappointing people from the beginning. So now it has a much more of an urban fantasy feel. So basically it is the story of Isis black and it's her for his very first point of view so you're in her head and she is sarcastic and she is a little bit of added to and sass and still a lot of compassion and love so isis is a form of vet so i pulled from a lot of things that i knew and she moves to texarkana so you asked how to pronounce this so she moves to texarkana which happens to be a twin city so it's there's one in texas and one in the arkansas side and it's the story of you know what happens if death knocks at your door 
So she accidentally, and I put this in parentheses, accidentally kills Des all in turn. And then comes knocking and says, guess what? You have the job. You know, and at first she knows nothing about magic. She knows nothing about the supernatural. This is not something she's interested in. She's a musician and she wants to be left alone. She doesn't have much of a life or career. She's, you know, barely making it as a waitress. What are you going to do? And her only friend gets kidnapped. So this is what takes you on this insane wild journey of Isis trying to survive, not die, find Bob. And this is just book one. So book two, I'm going to give you some zombies running around Texarkana. Book three, we're going through the adventures of her trying to stop a war between vampires and elves. And we got some demons in there. That's just insane. Four, I'm introducing you to famine. So in every book, the way we work on it is you're going to have a horseman, because it's based on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I should have told you that. So you get a horseman and a supernatural group. Then we're going to add you another one and give you a little bit more. So we slowly build up to a whole bunch of fantasy. So when I first introduced you, when I was going to events and I was introducing the book, my first thing to every reader is like, what do you read? And they're like, well, it's like, do you like fantasy? Like, no. My next thing is like, yeah, don't get this books because it's just not going to get better. Like it, it, magic just keeps escalating. <laughs> it's not going to go the other way. <laughs> so if you're not into fantasy, quirky characters and a whole bunch, of, I have a talking cat who's 5,000 years old. Come on now. So be aware. This is a whole bunch of stuff happening in this series. So you get in book five. Here's a cute anecdote that I tell everybody. Book five is called Judgment Day. Because if you're going to write about the, you know, four horsemen, eventually we're going to have an apocalypse. The problem was, <sighs> Judgment Day came out March 27th, 2020. We Ooh. went, thank you. See, you see that look. So <laughs> on the 17th, <laughs> when the world shut down, because we were all going to go into this pandemic and go insane, I have a book called Judgment Day. I was like, oh my God, how do you market this? So my readers were like, did you plan this? I'm like, no, nobody plans the pandemic. I, come on out. I can do this on purpose. This was not the plan. It's destiny. It was perfect timing with the fact, like, I even had, like, you know, the killer bees in Texas. I was like, oh, my God, how am I going to actually sell this? So it became the ongoing joke. It was really interesting to market a book because then basically everywhere I put a marketing, I put in parentheses, like, the book. Like that was the comment. Like every time it's like judgment day is coming, the book. <laughs> Everybody's like, what? I was like, what do you do? You know, you have ads, you have everything planned. Release day is coming. The book is ready. And it's supposed to be dropping out. And it's supposed to be, you know, what could cause an apocalypse, you know, and I have pestilence. It's all about, you know, plagues and, you know, destructions. And you have all this and you're going, oh my God, what just happened to my life? So yes, yes. there was lots of disclaimers that year with this book coming out. It's like, oh my God. Well, especially with that, I guess as soon as you said March 2020, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, and I, I'm sure that's what everyone's, you know, when they seen the book, they were like, oh. Oh, yes. Because everybody's like, is it going to be about COVID? I was like, no, not even close. No. So my readers who were really excited about this book and really expecting it found it to be the most amusing adventure ever. Like they couldn't wait to get their hands on it. We had lots of fun discussions and it was lots of like, that's pretty funny. I was like, it's not funny. That was not funny. Like, that's really not funny. <laughs> I didn't purposely do it, this, guys. <laughs> Absolutely not funny. But hey, this is the best story you can possibly find. Like, when did Judgment Day come out? I was like, when COVID did. Two weeks later. Exactly that way. Called Judgment Day. Yes, yes. So where do you get the titles from for your books? Titles can be difficult. At least for me. So it depends on what I'm working on. For this series specifically, because it was based on the four horsemen, every horseman's day name is on, you know, something related. So you get for a death intern, you're gonna meet death, you know, you get um plague is gonna be in the second one. You got war, so you got, you know, um, Forbidden War is three, you get Unstoppable Famine. So you get a little taste of what the horsemen are going to be with it. So that was kind of fun to play with it. My new series that I have now is based on another, you know, post-apocalyptic kind of world scenario. So it's very, like, I wanted to keep it very clean and to the point. So you get the first one is Recruited. The next one is Betrayed. The third one is Revenge. So you get a taste of what that's going to happen in those books. So I get to play with them. Sometimes the first time I write them is like... 
it doesn't work. I can truly admit it. I've written some titles like, oh, that's not good. That did not work out at all. And then you just go back and change them. So do you do the title right at the end after the book is written? Or do you sometimes is it the beginning that gets you started? I usually have it at the beginning. Like I start with the title. And then midway through, I've been like, hmm, that did not work. And go back and change this change it. So yes, I'm very open with my process and aware that sometimes it just doesn't fit and it doesn't flow. I try at the beginning, honestly, to have the title before I started. Like I was committed to this and then realized this is not working out. Why am I, why am I struggling with this? This is not happening. So let's just avoid the title and figure it out while we write. So when you're writing in DC, do you go like in a private room or do you write with music? Like, how do you write? My new process that works really well is I confiscate my couch. Like I write in a, I, I look like I'm launching. Literally, it's like I'm laying out on my couch. There's a blanket always. The cat is somewhere terrorizing something else. And I really write in my couch laying down. Just oh, have it away. Cool. Yeah. Super See, and this, is, and this is what the viewers and listeners want to hear, right? Because writers, everyone just assumes, oh, you're at your desk and you're just, you know, for I me, for writing, when I write too, I'm like all over the place. I'm like in my bedroom, sometimes in the tub, like I'm like, I got my journal, like I'm just like wherever it feels comfortable, right? Because what we need to release and what we're sharing. So where do you get the storylines from? Like, is it something inside or is it from seeing other shows, other books or? A little bit of everything is a combination. So I think my best, my most recent story is recruited. I honestly, and I think I was, I can tell you it was a Sunday. I was sitting around at home and this idea popped into my head. I usually, it's almost like a, think of a movie script, think of a vision or a scene. And honestly, and I had this vision and the vision, I thought it was probably the funniest thing ever. This is how this entire series started because I thought of, you know, how funny would it be to have a witch, you know what I mean? Hanging out in her patio, watching zombies do landscaping by being controlled by the cat. That's what I wanted to create. Yes, that's the entire, this is the entire premise of how this entire series is because I live in Texas and in my neighborhood, you know, grass cutting is an Olympic sport. Everybody has immaculate grass. It's amazing. Like landscaping is incredible. Like our side of the street, you're like, oh, wow, that's pretty impressive. I hate cutting. I'm allergic to grass. So obviously I'm not the person who, who wants to do this. So I'm always looking like grass has always been like me and my nemesis is the grass. So for whatever reason, I had this vision. And I, I remember, because I was working something else, I got up, went to the kitchen, and wrote down these notes. I'm like, this would be great if she was just literally singing inside, you know, drinking sangria air in a bikini, watching zombies cutting the grass with her cat bossing them around. As I <laughs> put the idea down, went back to what I was doing, I got a message about three hours later from a friend that said, hey, I'm putting this anthology together, and it's post-apocalyptic. Would you like to join? And I literally looked over my shoulder and I was like, oh my God, that was super creepy. I have the story for that. Got it. On my way. Wow. And, it, and then kind of the entire rest of it came out. So usually I will either get the first scene in my head or a vision of something that's just, I think is super funny. And then just the book just tends to develop. So do you have any plans to turn any of your books into a movie? All of them. You should need All to them. figure We should need to get. <laughs> we just got to do it, girl. <laughs> Amazon, Netflix, give me a call. I'm ready. All of them are ready. They're pretty. One of the best comments I always get is everybody says they're very visual. And a lot has to do with my training as a, in film and television is I write almost as a script. So you get that flavor going from one location to another. You understand, you know, time of the day and you get that feel as if you were watching a movie. So, yeah, I'm all about this. This you need to call. I'm here. Yeah. Well, it's like when even when you were describing you with your bikini and sangria and the zombies, I could vision you on, you know, just the way you described it. It was like, I can see this. Like, I can, you know. It makes perfect sense. You know, you it does. Uh, you're in the backyard sitting around watching this from across the hall as so you drink sangria and going, mm. yeah, I'm not going there. But somebody needs to stop that zombie from losing his head again. And that's kind of the beginning of this quirky dialogue of like, because the cat looks at her and is like, do you want to do? She's like, I don't do manual labor. <laughs> that's your department. Go fix your pets. And she's like, I'm not getting up from this chair. Sorry. See, I love it. I love it. Like a sassy cat on top of it. It's like. <laughs> all cats are sassy. <laughs> they all have that little, go over there. All right? the time. 
Yeah. So you did, you, you mentioned filmmaking in that. So have you have worked on any big broadcasts or film makes out there? I did a lot of access television when I was younger. So I got to do and play with a lot of television studios. I did a lot of student films. I actually never got to do a big production or actually a PA production because I joined the military. So my goal was really easy. I was going to join the military four years, get a whole bunch of life experience and go back to New York City and start working in films. Did not think I was going to spend a lot longer in the military and working in that side of the house. It's something that you don't expect that completely changes your life. It's like, didn't see that coming here, but okay, let's do this. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. So for the viewers and listeners out there that will be watching, that are watching now and watching the replay later, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will get them to DC and we will get those answered for you. If you're tuning in from any a platform other than YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook. I'd love to hear from you where you're tuning in from because we are all over the place. We are broadcasting all over. So a little bit about you, DC. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you? I know it's a little early for this question, but I'm going to re replay it again so we can make sure that people connect with you and, and work with you and maybe get on your podcast as well. Absolutely. Easiest way to connect if people are trying to find me is check, go to the website because there's links to everything there. I'm trying to be much more organized and be able to give people links to different places. Things that you can find in my website is a podcast. So you can kind of watch all 100 episodes if you wanted to listen to all of them. They're there. Where am I active? Usually Instagram. I'm usually very good at Instagram. I love visuals. I love pictures. So I spend a lot of time there. Spend a lot of time on Facebook. One thing that I recently have done that I'm extremely proud of myself, I've joined TikTok. So I'm not a really good TikToker. I can say that in real world. So it's a platform that I'm still learning. I was like, this is a lot more work than I expected. But I'm enjoying it a lot. But like the process is a lot of fun. It's a lot more of an intimate connection with people. You're able to kind of see people from a really fun side. I also realize it's really much a black hole. So I have to minimize my amount of time on TikTok because then nothing happens. Yep. So yes, if anybody has those issues, let me know. I can't be the only one. I'm like, I, <laughs> I am too. I get on it and I'm like, oh my God, I got to put this down because I'm not getting nothing done. It's too addicting. It's too much fun. I was like, oh my God, we yeah. have to write some books. I can't spend here this much time. So yes. Well, we do get carried away. I, I, for the longest time, I got carried away with just scooping gems. And I'm like, I'm not even ordering these gems. Why am I so hooked on this? It's like two hours later, I'm still watching them scoop these gems. I'm like, seriously, like, we got to get off of this TikTok. Like, I seen those videos. I was like, I don't want to stop. I don't know what it's about. But if I find out, I might be there forever. I was like, I keep scrolling. I was like, I don't know what that is. I, this is a little too much. I scroll really quickly. It's like, ooh, shiny rocks. Don't know what's going on. Don't want to know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm hooked on that. When I get on there, I'm just like, somebody call me, somebody get me off because otherwise I'm on there and I'm just watching and I'm just like, I'm not even buying them. So why am I so hooked? So you're also on Facebook, I believe, right? I am. So, yes, you can find me on my author page. And I, yeah, that one's pretty simple. I think it says dcgomez.author. I do try to kind of keep everything within the same handle so people can kind of find me easily and you can't miss it i'm always sitting around just cheesing like i have this huge smile and like curly hair you just look for the curly hair smiley girl can't miss me it's pretty easy <laughs> i'll be there there you go yeah so in the description you will find all of these links as well so for the audio listeners for the ones that are watching the video it will also be in the description where you can find dc gomez uh also DC, I want to get into a little bit of your tea because we are on tea time. So if I asked you what your tea is, what would your tea be? I find this question to be absolutely amazing because I love acronyms. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much fun. <laughs> so honestly, for me, is timeless, eclectic, and adventurous. Oh, I love it. Do you want to share it again? Timeless, eclectic, and adventurous. I can still to this day pull off people not quite sure how old I am. So I'm like, we're going with a timeless, definitely eclectic. I'm a little bit of a bunch of things put together. I think it's something that I really enjoy. And the adventure comes really close to being curious, which makes for an awesome writer. Everything's very fascinating to me. Everything is very funny in a dark sense, back to the dark sense of humor. So I love this feeling like a little kid and exploring different things. So I'm very much into that. So when you asked that, I was like, 
those things fit really well who I am. So yes. Well, and that's what it is, right? The tea is you. So, and that's why I can't serve anyone's tea. I can have them at my table, but I can't serve your tea because that is within you. So that is you. Like that is a strong tea, especially with the books that you write and the, the filmmaking, the journey with the military, you know, it's timeless. And you learned a lot from it. And the adventures, like, and the, I can't even say your E word. Eclectic. I'm eclectic. eclectic. See, my tongue doesn't even say, right? my, my French accent kind of kicks in and it's just like, oh, let's roll the tongue. <laughs> so I want to get a little bit into where, were you born in Dominican? Uh, I was. Dominican? Yep. So do you want to share a little bit about that? Because I think it's really cool to learn a little bit about different countries. I am full-blooded Dominican. So I was born in Dominican Republic. Actually, my, myself and my brothers were moved to the States when I was about 10 and a half. So went from a gorgeous, warm, tropical Caribbean island to Salem, Massachusetts, which was freezing because we got here end of October, which was insane. And I usually joke with my parents. I was like, we could have stopped in Florida. Like, I don't know why we skipped all the warm states and went up north. But it's also probably one of those greatest blessings is growing up in the Northeast is amazing. It is literally like living in a postcard. I didn't know till I left Massachusetts that everything in the United States didn't look like that. I didn't realize everything didn't have as much history as Salem, that everything was not a historical house. You know, that most people had no idea what the witch trials were. I'm like, what? I'm like, we get tons of tourists coming to Salem. So transitioning to writing urban fantasy should not be a surprise to anybody. It's like, I grew up in Salem. This is not very hard to imagine that magic and this world of adventures and this world of possibilities was always around me so it's really been really incredible to have that opportunity and do you go back home and visit not as often as my parents want so i can be honest so i'm getting better I'm at least making it to salem my goal is like once a year i was doing every two years the dominican republic not as much most of my family now lives in the states okay. so i don't have that opportunity to go back home I usually try to convince my parents, I'm like, so when are you going so I can kind of join you along in this journey of yours? So is there any special place that anybody should check out over there? Oh, my God. If you enjoy tropical resorts, Dominican Republic is beautiful. So I tell everybody, look for any of the all-inclusive resorts, you know, Samana, Punta Canta. You know, we have for a little history lesson for everybody to wonder where is the Dominican Republic. We are between... Cuba and Puerto Rico, and we share an island with Haiti. So it's kind of given that perspective. We're also the island that Columbus made kind of the capital of his empire, which is kind of scary and traumatizing all at once. But we have one of the, we have the oldest church in the new world. We have the oldest school. So you get to check out all, you know, Colombian, the whole entire world of what that journey looks like. You have beautiful buildings, just like you have in Cuba and Puerto Rico. So the Caribbean is just beautiful and is beautiful blue you know water that you don't get to see in the states i think that was probably one of my most terrifying experiences when i got here it's because i came from a country for country my parents like we're going to the beach i'm expecting dominican republic beaches like you know the whole white stand like almost like pirates of the caribbean so think of pirates of the caribbean as he's walking into the water i'm expecting that except that we go into the waters in new england and they're rocky and they're brown and i'm like where are we? Like, what is this? And why <laughs> the water dirty? <laughs> and it was cold. It was really cold. I was like, the Atlantic is not my friend. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> so it's more of my guess. So beaches is definitely, I'm more of a Florida girl kind of beach than I am up north for sure. So Florida has the blue water, right? They do. Like Southern Florida has like closer to the Caribbean. Gorgeous. She's like, yes, it's almost like home. <laughs> Almost there. I'm always looking for it. Like I always miss the water and being by the ocean. There's something very calming to my soul. Except when it doesn't look like home. You're like, hmm, this is I, I like to see. I'm just not gonna get in it. I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> well, and it's true, right? Some beaches are really rocky. Like you get there and yeah. you're like, uh, I gotta walk on that. Like mm, not the yeah. most it's not the most pleasurable experience. Let me put it that way. It's like you're not gonna enjoy it. Yeah. So how would you say tea time in your native tongue? Tea time in Spanish, because I'm, I'm full-blooded. Let's see, how would we translate it? La hora del té. La hora. La hora del té. La hora del té. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's almost, like, it's almost like a little bit of French, le té. 
Del té. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, oh, so you you roll the R's with Spanish. I think French and Spanish as well as Italian has the same root of the language itself. So I think we have the same kind of pronunciation in terms of how we conjugate our things. It's very similar. Same thing with German as well. Yeah. So I did ask you what your one word was that, to describe yourself. And you gave me the word energize. Yes. So why did you pick that word? Probably because it's the word that most people have used to describe me. I always thought I was very low key. They're like, no, you're not, girl. And the more excited I get, the faster I talk. So I'm reminding myself to slow down so people can understand. <laughs> I'm like, calm down, <laughs> breathe. Because I do, I have, I'm also a morning person. So if you see me at seven o'clock in the morning, I'm literally this hyper, probably a little bit more. And I have, don't actually do coffee for that reason. I think I did coffee and donuts one day. And everybody's like, oh my God we cannot stand you like you need to stand in <laughs> never <moment."> again <laughs> everybody was so traumatized like how do you have this much energy it was like what i don't know what you're talking about i'm fine what are we gonna do <laughs> they're like go away Just go away give her a pen and paper <laughs> oh my god yes which is interesting for a person who has this much energy that i am able to spend hours writing and not even think about it so yes yeah and your favorite color do you remember what you gave me purple and I think I'm wearing a little bit of purple today. So that's exactly why I asked all of my guests what their favorite color is. And it also tells me a little bit about you. So why do you like the color purple? Why is that your favorite color? I had, I'm in love with purple. And for the longest time, I never wore purple, which was really crazy for people. It's just one of those colors that is always in your face. Like you, it's like anything, any of the family of the red, you're not going to miss it. I, in high school, I ended up having braces, and my dentist says purple is a very royal color. You know, it's a color that most royalty use. So my mother's like, "Oh, look, that's great." So the only purple I ever wore as a teenager was in my braces. Like all of my little plastic things were always purple. Imagine that. Nothing else was purple. As I became, as I became much more older, more comfortable in my skin, love the color. Looks great. It has always been my favorite color. I couldn't tell you why. It just draws. It just draws me. It calls just me to it. it. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty cool story, don't I? Put in the braces and all that. Because I remember my daughter, when she had her braces on too, she had these color strips that she always put on different colors and that. So if you, if the young viewers out there are listening right now, what message would you have for them for writing? I have a couple. The first one is start. Wherever you add, start. Don't try to judge yourself. Don't try to edit yourself. Just be as authentic to yourself as you are. Put the story on paper, whatever that might be. A lot of the times we want to be perfect. And a lot of the times we wait for the train of perfection before we start something. I know a lot of aspiring authors that honestly have these amazing stories. And they're all in their head. And by the way, they have already spent more time talking about the speech they're going to give to Oprah when this book wins all these awards. But they haven't written the book. I was like, just write the book. Give yourself permission to have fun. And also realize that you can write it. You know, you don't have to be perfect. You can get an editor to help. You can do a lot of things. And sometimes I see a lot of youth being held back because of that fear. And also the fear of what people are going to think. You know, the more you work, the harder you work. Not everybody's going to appreciate you. Not everybody's going to see it the same way. You still have to do it. Yeah. So I want to get into a little bit of your motivational speakers. Mm -hmm. So where have you spoken and what topics do you share on? I do everything from leadership courses as well to schools and from young to old, you name it, I have an entire group. One of the things that I usually try to talk a lot, specifically to younger audience, is overcoming their fears and taking their story and their narrative to be able to create what they are, is being able to embrace their location and realizing that you don't have to be in a big city to be able to follow your dreams. A lot of the things that comes is, is our own internal dialogue that holds us back. We spend a lot of time trying to explain to ourselves and to everybody else why we can't do sometimes something instead of realizing that you are meant for greatness. You know, all the resources and skills that you have in your life is already put in you. You just have to take that leap of faith. A lot of the things that I see is we have really amazing people around us 
and they try to protect us a lot of the times. So their negative beliefs, their history, their story is what comes into it. And they throw that into our baggage. You know, they make it our story as well. So a lot of the times, you know, the tribe that you have, if your tribe is very negative, it'll be very hard for you to get out. It'll be very hard for you to follow your own path. And sometimes separating can take a lot of courage. So it is overcoming your beliefs. It's also overcoming the beliefs of others. Because the moment you start succeeding, the group that you have might not like you. And that's really scary. You might actually surpass the people in your circle. And we all know this. We all have people like, hmm. What, you think you're better than the rest of us? Oh, my God. We, we all have seen it. We have these people. We're like, mm, so you're too good to hang out with us. As adults, we can look at it. We can giggle. We're like, really? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can look at it and be like, I got things to do. And we can move on. As a teenager, that's really hard. As a teenager, it is extremely difficult to pass peer pressure. It is extremely difficult to say, I am meant for greatness. I am meant to follow this dream and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. So it is reminding them that you are allowed to dream. You are allowed to follow these things. And sometimes the people in your circle are not going to be happy because you are going to be doing great things. Yeah. And it's true, right? And for the listeners out there, for the, especially the youths, because the, I'm big on bringing education awareness to the youths because the youths are our future, right? Mm -hmm. If we encourage the youths to just beat those fears, beat the limiting beliefs, beat what even our circles are telling us, sometimes it's our, our parents, our siblings, you know, mm -hmm. and they hold us back. So we're like, okay, well, we won't do it right now. We'll wait a little bit. We'll wait a little bit, but that time always goes away. So it's really important. The message that you're giving DC is that, you know, just do it, just write it. You know, and you just never know what might come from it. I'm sure when you wrote your first book, you were like, whoa, where's this going to go? You're always going to be surprised of where your journey takes you. And sometimes is very different than what we expect. You know, it's being open to the world coming together and kind of bringing these things and whatever the results might be. As a writer, you know, we always, I, have, I have an outline. I have to outline. I'm very conscious. I need my outline. And like you said, my outline never usually works this way because your characters will just go like, oh, so we're going there. <laughs> They're going left. <laughs> okay. So so as the author, I spend half of my day like adjusting my outline because I'm like, I, I guess we were doing this. And we're going to be doing that. But it's that journey that we take and we enjoy it and we have a blast. The creation process of any book is probably, to me, the most fun. Writing the book is the most amazing part. Editing and everything else, okay, that's part of the business. But the actual sitting down and letting your mind go crazy and go wild. But it's the same thing as any child that wants to be an artist. You want to be a musician. You want to do these things that are outside. And you're going to hear people say, you don't know anybody that has done that. You Nobody in your family has succeeded. Nobody has done what you're trying to do. And it's their way of protecting you. Like a lot of people really honestly want to protect you. They don't want you to get hurt if you fail without realizing that what we have in our souls, what God put in our souls, and it's not the same for everybody. So yeah. instead of letting me fail and learn so I can get better, you just kind of destroy my dreams. You know, there's a lot of dream assassins out there. And they come disguised in the best and most loving way. And sometimes you're like, ooh, okay, your dreams is not mine. That's okay. This is not meant for you. It's for me. Let me take a leap. Yeah. And that and that's really an important message, right, to give to everyone, that there are a lot of dream killers out there. And it might be the person right next to you that you want that person to believe in you so much, but they are scared of where your dream is actually going to take you sometimes, you know, because there are changes that come with dreams and that and movements and adjustments and, you know, so... Any final messages that you have for the viewers and listeners tonight, DC, before we wrap up your tea time, any special messages about writing for the youths out there? So one of the things that as an author for me has been really, really interesting and fascinating to explore is the, is the fact that I write in multiple genres. I'm the girl who's going to write you some art fantasies and I have some demons and witches and everything in between. And then I'm writing devotional. So if you can possibly imagine how big of this spectrum we're going from very much one side of the paranormal world to a very much here's some real raw information to help you motivate it. So my message is always be, be okay to take these leaps. So going from fantasy to a devotional, even going from fantasy to a humorous fiction was a big shift. It was a huge transition that most people was like, 
are you sure you can do that? Really, you want to do that? And I had to become, even after writing so many different books, comfortable saying to people, it's still my journey. It is still my path. I'm still exploring this. I'm still having fun. I'm still doing things that I enjoy. So sometimes even we are going to question ourselves. Even ourselves are going to be in the middle. Sometimes I'm for every single young person and for every person who's trying to write, get out of your own way. Be okay taking these leaps and telling yourself it's only a book. We're not going to die. Let's do this. So, uh, yeah, I, you had mentioned a devotional uh, writing as well. Yeah, I have that marked down here. Uh, could you share a little bit about that before we wrap up? Of course. I have, it's called the Dare Collection. So it's a devotional series right now. There's three devotionals. They're all a designed to be done in about 28 days. So they're meant to be four-week devotionals. The first one is Dare to Believe, Dare to Forgive, and Dare to Love. And you don't have to do them all. You don't have to do them in that order. It's whatever is calling your soul. So when, and it's back, we're still in the pandemic. I was looking to do something to my readers. I had a Facebook series and it was all about motivation and inspirational. And the hard part about this is when I decided to do this, when this idea came, it was like, do I want to be known as a Christian writer? That was huge. I was like, I write fantasy. Like I'm the fantasy girl. Like what are we doing here? So I realized you can replace the scriptures with whatever document suits your soul. But at the end of the day, I wanted to give something back. I wanted to have a collection that people could connect and could heal. I think we're all healers at any one point. And as an author, all I have to give the world is my words. That's pretty much all I can give you. And all I can give you is my soul as well in these words. So the devotional is probably the raw that you're going to find. You know, I don't have a cat to save me. Like this is as pure as you're going to get. <laughs> so this is going to be... They were very, very, a process of love and hardest thing I've ever written because there's a lot of me in there. There's a lot of my experiences. There's a lot of experiences that I've seen that I've been through and also trying to help everyone find their place. So one of my favorite ones is like Dare to Love. My editor sent me the best comment ever because she goes, oh, that chapter hurt. And it was a chapter of loving ourselves. And a lot of us are because every week has a different thing. So one week is about loving others. We're good. We can love others or even in forgiveness. You know, we can forgive others. Forgiving ourselves and loving ourselves is usually the hardest thing you ever find. We are the only creatures that punish ourselves over and over for our mistakes. We don't forgive ourselves very easily. We can forgive the people we love or at least forget or pretend, but we don't do that with ourselves. So these books are first meant to be, yes, you can forgive others. But you have to forgive yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to believe in yourself first or nothing else makes sense. Let's be honest. We spend most of our lives with ourselves. Like you can't get away from you. So right. if you don't like this person, eh, you're not going to like anything else. Well, devotionals are really important as well because they're like affirmations, right? It's part of us opening up and sharing and just saying, I love me is hard. Oh, uh, you know, I had I had Gally Grosser on from the I Love Me Project. And when she sent me the magnet and she said, Liz, I want you to do a video that says I love me. I was like, oh, that's a hard one. Like it took me almost three days to do that video. I was like, this is hard. Imagine looking in the mirror and telling yourself you're beautiful. If you have never done it, imagine looking at yourself and telling yourself you're talented or that you're meant for greatness. Looking at yourself and saying you believe in yourself. Those are the things that we are not teaching our youth. We're not teaching ourselves. And then we're wondering why we have this drama epidemics of people who are just very sad and miserable. We're not promoting self-love. We're not promoting self-healing. You know, when somebody's trying to take that step, even mental illness, we yeah. look at it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want, we just want to cover our eyes and pretend it's not there. But there's this, this constant message that we see all the time is it always goes back to within. Where are we in our journey? Are we loving ourselves? Do, can we forgive ourselves? Can we care for ourselves? So putting this collection together was one of those moments you're like, because you have to drink the Kool-Aid if you're going to put it out there. Like, do right? I love myself? If not, to put these books together. And one of the things that I learned writing it is like, some days are better than others. Some days you're going to love yourself more. Some days you're going to trip and fall. You just have to have the grace to be authentic with yourself. You know, you might want to lie to the world. Don't lie to yourself. Yeah. Be honest with who you are and the path that you're given. And it heals. One of the biggest surprises is how well received the devotionals were. Because when you're taking a leap of faith, I'm like, 
might people read fantasy? Who is going to read this? They're going to say, where did this one come from? Like, <laughs> Thank you. Like, that was the question. I was like, what are my readers going to say when I actually drop this on them? The comments that I get, like, are you doing more? I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean more? Like, like <laughs> what do you mean more? Are you serious? So, yes, I have been getting that. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start playing with the idea. So, just because that journey is very raw for me as well as the readership. But, yeah, to actually get those feedback, I think is beautiful. They're like, I love the devotional. And they're meant to be written on. So, like, there's a page for me to talk and there's a page for you. So, every single day is maybe two to five minutes. So, it's a quick journey through this. So, I have a couple of readers. It's like, I have a journal because I don't want to write in my pages. I'm like, I, love I know a lot like of people do. do that. They buy books and they're like, I don't want to write in it. Like, I was like that at the beginning. I was like, I don't want to write in this book. It's so nice. I'm like, give me a notebook. Like, give me a notepad. And then I, I was like, we bought the book for a reason. The book is to write in the book. I left pages for that. I was always really excited. It's like, yeah, I don't want to use it. Because then one of the things, the best explanation I heard is like, I reuse it. So they, know, they don't want to write on it because they always going back to it. I was like, oh my God, that is beautiful. Like, I am part of your day. Like, how much better as an author can it get to know that you're somebody's part of their day? Like, this is what yeah. they do to get through there. So I was like, so then I have like that little smile. I was like, like yes, <laughs> <laughs> I have done it. Like, I am part of your everyday affairs. I love it. Life is great. But it's you giving different flavors and blends of yourself as well, right? It's from within. It shows you that I have this dark humor side, but I also have this devotional side where I'm still healing and I'm still growing as well. So it shows the two different sides of you, right? Is that yin and yang, right? We have the good and we have the bad, the 50-50, oh. right from the get-go. Like when you, right, when we started to show off, you said, you know, military, 50-50. Life is 50-50. You know, you got to try. If you don't try, then you, you have regrets. You you live with with the always well. What if I? What if I? Well, that what if could have been, I did it. You know, so get out there and do it. It's like DC said, just write. So for all the viewers and listeners out there that are listening and that will watch the replay later, if you're a youth and you you feel like you can't do it, just do it. Just try. We we encourage you to try, and you never know where your book might lead. Your story might lead, like DC having tea with Miss Liz tonight. So I'm really honored to have you sit with me and share your tea with me tonight, DC. So any final words before we say goodbye? And then I will give up the updates for the next guests that are coming up next week on Thursday. Miss Liz, it has been an absolute honor and a pleasure. And thank you for having me. I absolutely love this time. Having tea with you has been fabulous in so many different ways. Thank you. And to your viewers and listeners, this is an amazing program. And everything you do to bring so much love to the community is really appreciated. So I'm glad you're doing this. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. And for all the listeners and viewers out there, get ready. Because next Thursday, we have a double show. We have two in one day. That's right. Miss Liz has one in the morning and one in the afternoon. But we have switched that and we have put both of them in the afternoon because of time change. That's right. Miss Liz works in all these different countries. So I'm working with Israel and United States next Thursday. So the first one will be coming from Israel. And we will be talking about mothers learn how to identify sexual abuse. So we will be having... Uh, Ify Feta Dali coming in and Gallet might be joining us as well from the I Love Me project who is working with Ify on this project. And you might have seen Miss Liz wear these red, rose colored glasses on some of my Instagram posts. It is for this movement. This movement is rose colored glasses and the mothers that notice the signs and learn to identify. Then we're jumping into Dr. Mariana Hill Fodaro from the United States and she is an inductee of best-selling authors international organization and she will be speaking on trauma so it will be a heavy show a heavy thursday but be sure to tune in and then we're going to close up with an incredible on the final thursday of the month with philip Frakaski, I hope I'm saying his name right, with horror stories. That's right. I'm going horror. I'm scared of horror, but I love it as well. It's kind of it, I'm just one of those dark humor kind of women. So 
So be sure to check in Thursdays, every, every Thursday, there is a tea time. So sometimes we have double show, sometimes we have a single show. And tonight we had the incredible DC Goldman. So again, DC, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your tea. If you'd like to share with the audience one more time what your tea is, and then we will say good night. Thank you, madam. My tea is timeless, eclectic, and adventurous. And that's how we do it. We serve tea with Tea Time with Miss Liz. And I will see you guys next Thursday for a double show. Bye.